Yeah. So today we're doing um new mommy slash like. So today we're doing new mommy. So today we're doing new mommy slash uh, I guess newborn must haves. I know I watched a lot of these um, when I was pregnant and it helped me out a bit. So I was like, I might as well do one and see if I could help somebody else out in the meantime. You want to be as authentic as possible. So I was going actually like going through my pictures to see what was on my nightstand in the background, any pictures or videos. So this is definitely a legit what I used and what I suggest is important. We made, well I made, cause she was asleep. I made almond milk from scratch today, trying to do that. And then uh, I had that almond pulp left over, so I was trying to figure out what to do with it. And there's actually these cookies that I found a recipe to. So they're pretty good for the most part. I think the only thing is I would put a little more brown sugar swerve, but other than that, they're really good. So let's get into it. First and foremost, if you're breastfeeding, you need nipple cream. And um, you need to put that on from the beginning. I, I would say bring it to the hospital with you and start applying that bad boy from the first day that you uh, start trying to get your baby to latch. Just a Frida Mom uh, spray bottle. It holds more water than the ones that the hospital gives you. And um, it's just so much easier on your wrist when you're trying to, you know, clean down there. Sometimes you have to clean down there while holding your newborn. So I would just suggest it because it's so easy. <laughs> she was smaller I would say um, I always wish that I had like a sink flower so I suggest getting a sink flower or like a baby tub if you have a huge tub because I have like a jacuzzi tub um, and just so that like in those smaller tubs since they tend to be like a little bit deeper, you can actually get your baby's feet in the water versus taking forever to fill up your big tub and um, only having like this much water worth for them. Um, it'll keep them from sliding around and especially in like the sinks, like if you have like those steel sinks, it's extremely slippery. So I definitely suggest getting a, um, like a baby flower to put in there. It also keeps the baby warm so she's not freezing when you're trying to get her out or he's not freezing when you're trying to get him out. All right, I suggest infant Tylenol for um, after getting their shots um, for any fevers or for um, early teething. Now, don't use this all the time with teething. It's just when it gets to an extreme and she's just in uncontrollable pain, then I'll give it to her to help her rest easy if she's trying to take a nap. Definitely suggest having some gripe water and that'll help uh, with the hiccups and also help with like irritability or whatnot. Oh yeah, so I definitely suggest something to lay your baby in while you're doing things around the house or trying to have like mommy time um, or daddy time. Uh, be that a swing, a rocker, uh, a baby seat, just something you can quickly put your baby in while you go to the bathroom versus having to strap your baby to you all the time like um, in one of those like cloth strap things. When you're healing and you know, you don't necessarily want to hold always be straining yourself to uh, move your child around. So that's definitely a lifesaver. I suggest a pack and play um, if you're work from home. Um, that way your baby is close enough to tend to and be mobile if you need to go to the kitchen to cook or um, you know, you need to go to the restroom in between breaks or whatnot or if you're nursing while you're on the phones or whatnot, um, which is what I was doing. And I'll try to insert a clip of uh, my setup or if I have any pictures right here too because um, I would legit take her I was sitting at the desk I would take her feed her while I'm taking calls or whatnot put her back and keep it pushing and that brings me into the next thing uh, definitely suggest having a cloth baby carrier this will allow you to be hands-free and give your new newborn the attention that he or she needs and um, the cloth honestly better adjust to fit your newborn's custom size you don't know if this is going to be a big baby you don't know if she's going to be small because my baby's pretty petite <laughs> but you just you just never know um we also have one of the the ones that are, are like the straps with the clicks on them but she didn't really use that until she was older because she was so small okay so i definitely suggest a zip-up swaddle um 
I didn't have the patience to create the swaddle for the baby consistently every night. Like we tried it for the first couple of nights, but it's, it's not a fast thing and you have to kind of move your baby around if you're new to this whole swaddling thing like we were. Um, but that zip up swaddle, that thing is the fastest way to get your baby swaddled um, without having to move the baby too much. And because there's less time that you spend putting your baby down, that gives you more time to sleep. Okay, so you definitely need mittens for your little baby because their fingernails are growing so fast and they're really thin. All it takes is that one time for your baby to scratch themselves really bad across their face. And I promise you, after breaking down into tears, you're gonna make sure you put those mittens on. So just have them on deck, okay? I suggest birth cloths uh, to keep the vomit that you well, the vomit you can control <laughs> off of you um, and bibs to keep your newborn's clothes dry because uh, babies drool a, a lot um, and they have very sensitive skin and I know uh, she was getting like the rash around her neck real bad when she drooled too much. Um, so I suggest just, you know, starting them off with that, keeping the bibs on them. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely save you in the long run. Um, help you out with uh, having to change your baby's clothes all the time because they're constantly soaking their clothes um, while they're teething or whatnot because she started teething pretty early. I definitely suggest a, um, a boppy or like an off-brand boppy from like Ross or whatnot um, and this is what you'll use to prop your baby up for like tummy time or when uh, you want to sit the baby up and be hands-free for a moment like if you're watching TV and you're trying to like work or something um, baby can sit up be able to look around and um, get familiar with their surroundings as their vision gets uh, gets better and improves and they can see more things in the distance because um, I know my baby was super observant and that helps a lot okay I definitely suggest having a car seat uh, you literally need it to leave the hospital so make sure you have that installed properly um, I know they said that you could go to past like the to the firehouse station and they'll be able to check that for you for free so if you don't know now you know um oof no mess diaper spray Whew. 10 out of 10 recommendation you don't have to worry about getting any of those little spoons or putting the diaper rash cream on your hand or anything it's mess free you literally do a shake it up you do a couple of sprays and your baby is good to go it makes changing super fast um and here's a pro tip i suggest applying the diaper cream or the diaper rash cream to your baby from the beginning if you have the clear from your doctor to uh prevent the diaper rash from happening in the first place. Just baby aquifer for uh, like the initial, what's it called? The initial baby scalp or cradle cap, the initial cradle cap peeling. Um, and your babies do peel when they come out of the womb. Um, it also helps with like sensitive skin or any rashes um, and dry skin because my baby did have dry skin. I suggest a pump to increase your milk support milk supply if you want to exclusively breastfeed or if you're going to do half and half which is what we did um honestly her latch was so strong that it was actually preventing her from latching on to me properly so i was pumping a lot more at the beginning and then i went into breastfeeding her more so as she got older and you know got adjusted to how to properly um, latch and whatnot um, but I was I was power pumping and a lot of other things and I can do a milk supply um, video um, but that totally helps get your milk supply up if you're consistently getting in your your pumping um, feed your baby first and then pump afterwards I always suggest that um, I didn't I didn't know that from the beginning like I was trying to pump and then feed her afterwards and I mean it helped with my breast milk supply but at the same time like you know, babies get kind of antsy and just just feed your baby first and then pump afterwards. <laughs> It'll help you out. Oh, and pro tip, uh, while you're feeding your baby on one boob, be pumping on one on the other boob. Uh, 
that is a game changer. Like I know like you can haka or whatnot, or you know, attach the little like device so that it catches like your overflow, like your drip down, your let down. But I suggest pumping on the other boob while you're breastfeeding on, the, on this boob and that'll help with your milk supply going up. Um, it's kind of like killing two, but two birds with one stone. She's feeding off of this one. You're tricking it to make it seem like you're, you have twins basically and you're feeding two babies at one time. So you're getting replacement at the same time that you're feeding your baby. And then as soon as you, as soon as your baby finishes, if your baby finishes before you it, like finish your 30 minute milk pumping session on this one, then you just adjust your pump and then put this one on to pump for the remaining of the time and you're gonna be killing the gang. Oh, this is for the mommies. I suggest having a uh, lactation tea or drinks to increase your milk supply. Um, definitely over those addictive lactation uh, snacks or whatnot if you're trying to slim down fast because I definitely, I mean, I didn't work out really until the doctor cleared me. I worked out maybe one time before then and then somebody was like, you know, you're supposed to wait till your doctor clears you and I was like, oh. So I stopped until I got that six week uh, clearance to start working out properly. Um, I was not trying to, you know, stay chunky monkey forever because I wanted to get back into dancing. But honestly, every mom's different. Every pregnancy is different. Take your time and do what you need to do to make you comfortable. <laughs> and do not feel pressured by society to get a quick snap back. Like, don't listen to them. Don't worry about them. Nobody else matters but you and taking care of that little human that you just pushed out of your vagina, okay? Relax, mommy. <laughs> Ooh, and another tip for breastfeeding. Um, stay hydrated. Uh, I suggest having body armors on deck. I did the, it was low calorie. Um, they had a couple of flavors, um, really good. Um, sometimes I would even mix that with my lactation drink mixes and um, or I'd create a smoothie with them and stuff. And that body armor is just a lifesaver. I think it's the coconut water in it that kind of gives you enough fluids to, you know, produce milk because milk is basically water. <laughs> of course there's nutrients in it, but it's mo mainly water, so. It helps. Okay, so um, I definitely recommend having like a blood pressure cuff and some compression socks on deck too. Uh, I didn't have any complications during my pregnancy. Like I didn't have gestational diabetes or anything, thank God. Um, and um, not really any swelling before having the baby, which is kind of odd. I might have had like one time where my knees looked a little swollen. Um, but I had swollen, extreme swollenness after like postpartum and I had, a, my blood pressure was going up after having the baby. Um, so, you know, it was probably due to like, like stress, hormones, you know, uh, trying to produce milk, learning how to be a mom, taking care of a tiny person. Um, but a lot of women do swell during pregnancy. So having compression socks on deck definitely is not going to hurt you. Um, and then, you know, the blood pressure cuff just to make sure that, you know, you're okay because you want to be in good health so that you can last a long time and be there for a long time to take care of your little munchkin. Okay. Mm. A stomach compression. I did not do this <laughs> at the beginning. I waited like a while afterwards to start, you know, using a stomach compression or like a waist trainer or something. And that is one of my biggest regret regrets. Um, regrets um, is not wearing one of those sooner because that is what's going to help put all of your organs and abdominal muscles back in their rightful place um, faster, especially if you end up with diastasis recti or abdominal muscle separation is what that is, which is what I had. And of course, like, you don't have to do it that way. Like, I'm a living testimony. I've gotten the, the space to shrink a lot. Like, it was probably like, maybe like four, and it went down to probably like an inch now, or half an inch. Um, but... Please, <laughs> if you're if you're trying to get your snatch back, you're going to want to start wearing that compression as soon as possible. And I'm not saying like overdo it to where you're uncomfortable, but have something that's going to, you know, pull you together. Even if you're wearing it for like an hour out of the day or like wearing it while you sleep or something. 
Well, thank you so much if you stuck it out to the end. Um, I would love to hear any of y'all's favorite baby items or any tips and tricks that you have down in the comments below. <laughs> I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab you. I'm gonna I just want to remind you that, you know, you got this, okay? Peace.